Hello, and welcome to the ServiceNow REST Ticketing Connector Installation and Configuration Guide. Let's get started on installation. As you can see, I've already logged into the OEM system. We now need to apply the ServiceNow REST Ticketing Connector, so we're going to navigate to Setup, Extensibility, Self-Update. Once this loads, we're going to click on the management connectors. We're going to scroll through our list of available connectors till we see the ServiceNow REST ticketing connector. I'm going to select that and click Apply. Click OK. We can see a job has been submitted to apply the update. Click OK. By the time we've done uh, going through the Navigation, we'll see that it's already been applied. So now we're going to move over to configuration. We're going to go to setup, extensibility, management connectors. Under create connector, we're going to select our connector type, in this case, the ServiceNow REST ticketing connector, and we're going to click go. First thing we'll do is give our connector a name. In this case, I'll call it our ServiceNow demo. And you can give it an optional description if you like. I'll click OK. We've now created our first instance of our ServiceNow REST ticketing connector. So let's go and configure it. We're going to select it and select Configure. Once we're in here, you'll see that we have a number of uh, different connection settings. First, our web service endpoints. We have our create ticket, our get ticket, and our update ticket. In each of these, you can see that we need to enter the subdomain of our ServiceNow account. So to do that, I'm going to nav navigate over to our ServiceNow instance. As you see, again, I've already logged into my ServiceNow instance. To grab the subdomain, we're just going to go up into the URL, and we're going to select the subdomain from here, copy it, bring it over and replace each of these fields with the subdomain. Okay, next up is our username and password. That one's simple enough. We can use the same username and password that we logged into with ServiceNow. That being said, this will be the user that creates and closes the tickets in ServiceNow. So if you have a service account you'd rather use, make sure to enter those credentials. In this case, I'm going to be using admin. I'll enter my password. Next up is the incident number. To do this, we're going to have to navigate back to ServiceNow. I'm going to select incidents. And I usually select all in case this query doesn't come up with any incidents. Once we've navigated here, we can see all the incidents we have. If you are in a new ServiceNow instance, you can always create a new incident by selecting new up here. But since we already have one, I'm going to select it. And once you're in here, we're going to be looking for the number field and grabbing the value out of that. So here we see our incident number. And we're going to bring that right back into our OEM. Uh, connection settings. Now in this uh, demo, we're not going to be using a proxy, so I'll leave that clicked out. That being said, we are going to use the web console settings, so I'm going to select those. And what these do is allow us to create a URL from the OEM incident to the ServiceNow ticket. So we'll click enable, and again, all we need is that subdomain. So you can go back to ServiceNow and get it, or you can just select the value that we collected before and enter it here as well. Now we're going to click OK. And there you go. You can see our uh, connection test succeeded. We have a green check mark for our status. So we have now successfully installed, created an instance, and configured our first ServiceNow ticketing, REST ticketing connector instance.